What's going on everybody, it's Stas here, and in this video we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be doing a trading update, talking about what I personally did today in the markets, as well as some stocks and ETFs that I'm watching and looking to trade right now in the month of December of 2019. And as you guys read in the title, we have to talk about some stocks and some ETNs, including you guys and Shopify, and my opinions on whether or not this market could see some downwards pressure here over the next couple of days and honestly over the next couple of weeks. So if you guys enjoyed the video, hit that like button, consider subscribing if you want to see further content from me and consider joining our Strive Smart Discord group chat as well as our Strive Smart Facebook group, 100% free of charge. Those are linked down below in the description box and let's get right into the video. So as you guys can see here with about 30 minutes left in the market today. The SPX, the S&P 500 is down 5 points down 0.16% and it's pretty much holding steady as to where the futures gap down yesterday. If you guys recall in yesterday's video, the futures were down about 4 or 5 points and that pretty much held throughout the entire day. Again, now we're down about 4 or 5 points and if we zoom in on the daily chart of the S&P, you guys can see we were down that four or five point level like I said we kind of rallied up we failed to break out of the highs from the previous session and we've pretty much just been down trending for the rest of the day lower highs lower lows getting rejected by the moving averages and now it seems like we're trying to break out so in the next 30 minutes I'm interested in seeing and obviously if you guys are watching this you know what happened but I'm interested in seeing does this thing break out at the last 30 minutes does this thing end up pushing for a lower low maybe continuing the downtrend that's going to be important in analyzing tomorrow's session and kind of or really just anticipating what could happen um, you know in tomorrow's session so overall the markets right now they're seeing pressure from trade the tensions between China and the United States there's a lot of uncertainty right now because December 15th we have a lot of tariffs that are set to you know proceed right they're set to start on December 15th and we're waiting now to see what's going to happen with this are the tariffs actually going to go into effect is Donald Trump going to push back the deadline which we've seen him do in the past that's kind of what the market's waiting for at this point um, you know in my opinion and that's kind of why we failed to break out of these all-time highs these past two days and kind of why we've been seeing some some downwards pressure and why we could potentially see more downwards pressure, right? Because I think if these tariffs go into effect, and I'd love to know what you guys have to think down below, I think the markets are going to push down even further. I think we might see um, a, a further sell-off, but I think if the deadline pushes, which I think is most likely going to happen, honestly, from my personal opinion, you know, I think these markets could hit all-time highs again. So that's kind of what what we're waiting for, what I'm personally waiting for through my thought processes. Um, so let me know what you guys, again, have to think about that down below. But that's really just what's weighing down um, these markets today. And if we go over here to the Dow Jones, you guys can see this one's down even more, about a quarter of a percent, 75 points to be exact. And this chart pattern, although there's a lot of crap, and I'm going to delete this for you guys right here, um, right now, to make it a bit more um, attractive to look look at. Although, you know, we've been in an uptrend. Now it seems like this uptrend is slowing down. We can see a potential triple top little head and shoulder forming here on the Dow, right? Left shoulder head at the all time high, right shoulder forming, especially if we break, you know, these moving average support levels, which would be very, very negative for the Dow. And that could lead us to see a sell off maybe down to that 180 SMA, maybe a 1000 point haircut off the Dow on a technical basis if we were to break that that's kind of what could make sense here especially if we get some further downwards pressure um, from the trade war which could very likely happen here which we've seen happen a lot in the past so I'm watching this level right let's say tomorrow we just end up gapping up let's say we pop up from here technically speaking that's going to be a higher low and that is technically
technically speaking, um, a continuation of the uptrend at that point, and we could be gunning for all-time highs, even though we're in the midst of this trade drama and this deadline that is putting pressure um, you know, on the market. We still have to consider that as a potential scenario that could play out, and same exact thing with the S&P, right? We could end up, who knows, holding this and hitting an all-time high tomorrow despite this trade stuff, but I like looking at it for multiple different angles to get different perspectives to analyze the situation better. And if we get that further sell-off on the S&P, right, maybe we sell down to 3100 That would be a correction of around 1%. A bigger correction would be anything more towards $3,000 flat, maybe down to this 180 SMA. That would be quite the haircut of about 3-4%. Not crazy, right? But that would be one of the bigger pull-downs that we've seen um, in the recent history here in these markets. So the NASDAQ right now is down 21 points, down 0.26% in a similar situation as the Dow, down about a quarter percent here on the day. And honestly, guys, this is looking the most bullish out of the three, in my personal opinion, because we're trending above the 50 SMA here. Seems like we're holding it at a higher low, right? As the S&P is, honestly, guys, you know, it's looking kind of similar here, which the S&P is looking uh, kind of bullish in a sense as well, but the Dow is not looking bullish at all in my personal opinion. But back to that NASDAQ, you know, just like the S&P, I could see it popping despite the trade tensions we're seeing right now and despite this deadline, right? I could definitely see it popping. But if we see that further correction, that 180 SMA is what I'm looking at. That's going to be around 1 to about 1.3% lower from where we are now. We could potentially hold that level. And if we break that, you know, in these next couple of weeks, we could be seeing an $8,000 level. That's a spot that makes sense for me for a pretty healthy correction. You know, if we get if we got down to this level, that would be around, I'd say, 4 or 5% at least, 3 4% um, down from where we are now. And in my opinion, again, that would be a pretty healthy correction here um, for the NASDAQ. So overall, that's what I'm looking at in terms of these markets. Those are kind of my thoughts. I'm just watching watching this trade deadline guys that's the truth that has a lot of um, you know a lot of swing on this market it could push it up it could push it down and I'm being pretty cautious before this trade deadline I'm not being as crazy with my capital with my cash I'm being a bit more again cautious and I'm waiting to see what happens before I deploy more capital here in swing trades because the past two three four weeks these past couple of weeks I have been a bit more heavy in the swing trades and I've been scaling out of those swing trades like I've been talking about on this channel, right? You guys remember, you know, McDonald's I got out of, Chipotle, Shopify I was in, Atvi, a bunch of other ones. Now I'm only in Tesla and that's really the only one I'm working with, um, you know, if I remember correctly from my swing portfolio. And that is, again, because I'm holding cash and I'm being cautious. So let's talk about what I did today in terms of my trading. So like I just mentioned, I was in Tesla or I'm in Tesla, but I actually got out of some of my Tesla position today just to lock in some profits and I'm looking to add more. So let's pull up Tesla here. We'll talk about what I personally did. So as you all remember over the past couple of days, I've mentioned this pretty much in every single one of my videos. I've been in Tesla since 233 or not 233. I wish 233, 333, 300. 332 bucks is where I've been um, in Tesla since, right? Or does that even make sense? That's where that's that's the price I got into Tesla, guys. 332, 333, right? And I forget what day it was, but that's the price I've been in. And kind of my thesis behind Tesla is, or it was, hold if it holds 328, right? Hold the 333 position that I had if we hold this level. Ultimately, we popped above there. And that's what led me to holding onto my position because now I remember I got in a couple of days before. It might have been one of these days, right? So I got in here 
We held that level. I did not cut my losses. That's where I was going to cut my losses if we were to break, right? We held that, broke that 50 SMA, ultimately broke that 180 SMA today and that $340 level that we talked about in yesterday's video, which is very bullish. And that's where I decided to take a little bit off of the table, right? Because in my opinion, when you're up on a position, it's never a bad idea to take just a little bit of profits. I nibbled a little bit. Now I feel comfortable with those profits I nibbled and I still feel comfortable with, you know, the position I have left that has a lot more potential up to 350. And like I mentioned in yesterday's video, I think this thing could really go up to 360 bucks. So how am I going to play it at this point? I might add more money into Tesla later on in this week if it holds 340, right? So now I'm in a position where it's kind of interesting, right? I took those profits, so I have some gains in the position, and my average cost is still right around here, 333, right? So I have that buffer on Tesla of about 2.5%, right? Because I ended up selling, or by the way, I didn't even mention this, I ended up selling, um, I believe, at around 341, 342 today. So the profit I did make on the shares was around 2 to 2.5%. 5%, right? So I have that buffer built. So even if we break 340 tomorrow, which would be bearish, and you know, I'm looking to maybe hop out at that point, I'd still make a profit. So at this point, I feel comfortable holding those, you know, uh, shares that I do still have. And again, I'm adding more money if we do end up popping up 334 or 343, rather 345. That's where I'm looking to add more um, in terms of Tesla. Let's say we just completely dump through the floor. Um, I'll probably just take profits, anything from 338, 337, 336, and et cetera, then I'll evaluate the situation from there. But in terms of my trades, guys, that's really all I ended up doing today. TSLA, just locking in some profits. And I would have been more aggressive, but again, I'm being cautious. It's never bad to be cautious, especially when there's a huge event that you know is going to push the market. You know it's going to happen. And most of us know that, especially if we've been dealing with these markets for the past year or two because we know how things can fluctuate based on this trade war. So let's talk about what stocks and ETFs I'm watching to trade right now, starting off with UGAS, natural gas, and DGAS. So as many of you guys know at this point, natural gas has been an absolute bloodbath, especially since yesterday when the futures markets opened up, natural gas was down 5 to 6% absolute bloodbath, right? You guys can see it here yesterday, and I talked about it deeper in yesterday's video, but we gapped down from 233 all the way down to 215, lost 15 to about 18 cents of natural gas's value in that gap down, which is insane, right? And we're pretty much just continuing the downtrend at this point with this gap down as that is officially a lower low. And for a downtrend to continue, guys, we obviously have to hit lower lows and we obviously have to hit lower highs, right? So in terms of that, you guys has been getting crushed, right? Because you guys is going up whenever natural gas is going up. And since natural gas has been going down, you guys is getting demolished, right? Down 12% right now at its lowest, it was down 17%. And my theory is playing out here, guys. Do you, do you remember what I mentioned in yesterday's video? I mentioned how since natural gas is so battered down, so battered down. We dropped five, six percent again, like I mentioned, right? Since it's so battered down, it, it, it has a lot of potential, in my opinion, to see a breather, to see some kind of comeback, to see some type of bounce up to those moving averages like it did last time it saw a very similar drop. If you guys remember, this was about a week, week and a half ago, we saw a very similar drop where natural gas got ridiculously oversold in a very quick uh, span of time from 247 down to about 230, similar drop to that, and then we were 
Carter covered back up and I actually called this very same move out during that session, right? During those sessions in this time period. And you guys ended up being a nice bounce back play at that point in time. But you have to be careful because it didn't break out. Obviously, the mild weather, you know, all this negative pressure on natural gas ended up shooting it down even further, which is, again, why you have to be careful. And since then, again, we haven't broken out. Now we've gotten that massive gap down very, very oversold. Now we're seeing a point in time where you guys could fill up to maybe this 50 SMA again at about 940, at about 950, right? That That's a huge margin of profit, guys. That's about a 15, 16%, right? So that's kind of what I'm looking for in tomorrow's session. And I got an answer, or not an answer, a question from somebody, Um, I think it was on Discord or something, where they entered in here and they're looking to, you know, trade it up on the bounce back. And I honestly think if I were to trade it again, that's the way I would personally do it. But don't just do that because I'm saying that's how I would do it. I'm not doing that. I am not doing that. I'm just saying if I were to, that's what I would do. But do your own research, do your own due diligence, and of course, don't trade anything because somebody else is saying they would trade it some certain way because that's not how you're going to advance in your own career, in your own life in terms of stock market investing and trading. So you guys, that's how I personally would do it. But again, these are very difficult. These are not meant to be swing traded, although people swing trade them all the time. They don't care about that, right? People are looking to risk capital on this. Hey, if you're looking to do that, I, again, would trade it up to that 50 SMA. I think that's possible, especially with the bounce back that we're seeing right now. So why has natural gas been weak? Let's talk about some weather that I do have here on my phone, guys. And of course, this is contributing to the weak demand and honestly to the overall downtrend that we've been seeing on natural gas. So national demand will be very light through December 9th to the 15th, Monday as warm high pressure rules the south and east with very nice highs of 50s to 80s even with areas of showers however very cold air will push into the north plains at the same time with lows of negative 10s to 20s heavy rain and snow will develop monday to tuesday over the midwest as the cold front collides with warm moist air over the east for a strong winter storm as cold air spreads across the ohio valley and east wednesday to Thursday, national demand will surge. High pressure will quickly build across the U.S. Friday through Saturday with highs of 40s to 70s returning for a swing back to light national demand. Overall, very light national demand Monday into Tuesday, strong Wednesday to Thursday, and light next weekend. So based on that weather, guys, we can see it's going to be mild pretty much all throughout this next week. We'll have a little cold stint in the middle of the week here but still it's going to be mild so I'm interested in seeing you know how this recent mild weather and of course the future mild weather how that's going to impact these natural gas reports and Thursday that's when the report does come out at 10 30 a.m eastern standard time so for now short term guys again I'm looking at you guys for a bounce back but overall in the next two three four weeks I still see downwards pressure just based off of the fundamentals here and just based on the overall price action of natural gas. So let's talk about some other stocks and ETFs that I do have on my watch list here, guys, starting off with good old Shopify. As you saw in the title, Shopify to 400, is that possible? I think it is. And the funny thing is, guys, I was talking about stocks in yesterday's video that kind of go against the grain. They do well when the markets are selling off, and it seems like Shopify Shopify has been that stock, especially today. It's up 2%, but don't let that fool you. It was actually up 4 or 5% at the peak today, and the markets, you, you guys can see, they're actually red. So this is a stock that's been doing quite well, and with the price action we're seeing today, I'm thinking this is very bullish, especially since we broke above 370. I'm just hoping here in the next 10 minutes, we do end up closing above 370 as a support. That's ideal for 
for an entry point tomorrow. And honestly, I'm looking for an entry point tomorrow if we do end up holding 370. That's key in my personal opinion. And this 50 SMA here on the hourly chart. And you guys can see on the 4-hour chart just how much potential Shopify does have here. If it cools off a bit, consolidates a little bit, then continues the uptrend back up to the 380s and above. Just to give you all a perspective here, from 370 up to 400 bucks, which I think is very likely to happen here with how hot this thing has been, you know, that's about a 7-8% potential. And it literally went up 5% today, guys. So who knows? This could fill the gap up over the next one, two, three weeks, in my opinion. It's very possible, again, with how hot the stock has been and this very bullish technical break that I'm seeing. So Shopify, I'm liking this one heading forward or moving forward rather. Another one that's a bit more defensive is Altria, ticker symbol MO. This is another one that broke a very critical resistance today, being at around $50.30. And you can see the uptrend that Altria has been on, right? The uptrend, we've been breaking out of moving averages. We got some good news regarding flavored e-cigarettes, and that really impacts Juul, which Altria owns a lot of Juul. So that is a good sign. That's a catalyst here um, for Altria in the short term. And honestly, it being a, de a defensive stock, the markets could get a bit rocky here. This could end up being a good play as a short swing up to about 53 bucks, guys. That's what I'm looking at it right now um, as, right? You know, from 50 up to 53, that's about a 4 to 5% profit here on Altria that could be potentially made. The next one I'm watching, we already covered this in depth, is Tesla. Very bullish uh, move in my opinion today. Doing well today despite the markets selling off. And I already talked about it, not looking to spend more time on this one, but if we break 340, like I mentioned, I'm looking to add more capital up to 360, right? So Tesla, I'm really liking that one. Square is another one that I'm watching here that's kind of in a, in a funky spot, right? We're not fully breaking down to 66 again, which is that support, but we're not breaking out of these moving averages quite yet, and it's kind of a double top here, which is a bearish move. So approaching square, the way I'm looking at it is, which direction are we going to push heading into tomorrow's session? Let's say these markets have a great day, and it seems like this is moving with the markets now. It's down about 1%. That could definitely push square out of that 68 level, which is ideal in my opinion, right? So for me to get into square, I need to see that 68 break out of that double top because again, I'm looking at this being a bit fearful about it because it could be a bearish move, um, especially if we dump below 66, guys. That's a danger zone. But again, if we break 68, I can see this thing filling up to 70 bucks um, towards this resistance. It's very possible. Another one I'm watching is Home Depot. You guys know I, I swing traded this one um, a couple of days ago, took a loss on it. I'm still looking to re-enter just because I'm losing or I lost money on a stock that doesn't mean mean I scrap it forever. I watch it sometimes, you know, and typically when I take the loss, I don't like watching that chart, you know, you know, like staring at it for the rest of the day because I get FOMO sometimes. A lot of people, you know, do that. You know, a lot of people get FOMO that way by staring at charts right after they sell it because let's say you sell it and it goes up. You're like, ah, crap, let me get back in. Then it goes down. You lose money, right? So, so I don't really look at charts right after I sell out, take a loss, whatever, but a couple of days after I come back and here we are. So we're testing that 50 SMA, which I'd like to see a break on Home Depot there before even re-entering the stock, right? Ideally, you know, this is one that does well. It seems like when the markets are selling off, it's up 1% today. It's up $2.35. And ideally, I'd, li I'd like to see a push into 215 or not 215. It's already at 215 into 217, 218, 220 before starting a position, then probably adding more at 225 as we break these levels of um, resistance, right? So Home Depot, you know, 
I'd stay away because the trend is still down, right? We're still making lower highs, it seems like, at this point, especially if we dump tomorrow. So I'm not looking to fight the trend here. So I'd personally stay away for now. But again, if we get that 50 SMA break on the four hour chart, that's going to be an attractive move in my personal opinion. So last one that I want to talk about here is gold slash GC, guys. This is important here. This is very important because if these markets tank, we have to look at this from all angles again, like I said earlier in the video. If these markets tank, we have to see what gold does because typically people hedge with gold. A lot of people do, right? Against the economy, they hedge with gold. Against the dollar, right? Against the stock market, against all other types of assets, right? So if the markets dump, gold could see a big rally. We saw the rally in the past. You know, this thing went from 1200 to 1500 in a couple of months. That's quite impressive, right? We've seen the sell-off now. Now we're getting to a zone that a lot of people might consider a buy, right? We're getting to a point of old resistance, um, 1450. If we hold that as a new support, seems like we already did. We break out, market sees some turmoil. This could lead to an all-time high or rather a test in the all-time highs or the highs that I'm seeing here, you know, on the four-hour chart of gold being at about 1566. So JNUG could be a good play. That goes up whenever GDX goes up, which is really just a gold ETF. So if gold goes up, in theory, JNUG goes up, right? So I'm watching that heading forward here. And um, that's pretty much it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to go down below, hit that like button, consider subscribing if you want to see further content for me. And if you guys want two free stocks from Webull valued up to 1400 bucks, go hit that link down below, sign up, and once you deposit 100 bucks, you get those two free stocks. And I also get two free stocks, guys, being completely transparent with you all. But at the end of the day, who does not like free money, right? So if you want free money, two free stocks, that link is down below. Strive Smart Discord's link down below. Strive Smart Facebook group is linked down below as well. Feel free to shoot me a message on any platform. If you guys have any questions, I'd love to help you out. So I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace out.